Happy, happy as the man who has viewers. It's good to see you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday. It is December 12th. Now, what I'm going to do is what I do all the time. I'm going to share my due diligence on some hot OTC and penny stocks. We're talking about stocks under five bucks. You can find those on any market. And we're particularly interested in the ones that can make us some money. Now, when I find these hot stocks, I'm normally finding them by looking at the charts first. Seems to me a hot chart has more prevalence than hot news. You take hot news and put it on a cold chart, chances are it's going to fall flat on its face. So I like to find volume coming into a chart or a breakout setup. When I find a chart that shows me some heat, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for that spark to either get that chart going or to keep it burning. When I find a hot catalyst to go with my hot chart, we've got ourselves a hot penny stock. These are the sort of stocks I like to share with you each day, and I've got a few to share with you right now. First one we're going to take a look at is Two Hands Corporation, ticker TWOH. Now her chart is what caught my attention specifically. She has been falling for quite a while. She's been down for quite a while. Well, she had an early breakout over the 200. It was a nice one. Came back down under the 200 and she's bouncing off of a strong support. And the way I see it, it is not a big stretch. It is right in the realm of normality. We are looking at an easy 100 to 400% gains when she gets off of this bounce. So two hands. She finished today just a little over 14 cents and she dropped a lot. She dropped over 16%. She's on the pink tier. She's current. We have one of those green ticks we're always talking about the validated information. We've got a transfer agent verified. We don't have a verified profile. Now, it's not a deal breaker, especially if you're day trading, you're getting in and you're getting out as fast as you can. No problems. But if you're going to get into a stock and hold it for a while, especially a pink, you need as much validated information as you can get. You can't count on the financials and all you really get is the word of the management. Outside of that, those two green ticks over here. So, if we're just day trading this, we're okay. Now, I see they've got independent directors listed over here. The only reason I know you list independent directors is when you have aspirations of uplisting. You have to have independent directors to uplist, and they normally list them here when they're thinking about uplisting. Now, I haven't read it anywhere, but if it's there, it's going to be in one of their filings. So, happy hunting to you. So, what is this company about? Well, they do have a description here, but it seems to me this is a little outdated. So what I've done is just jump on into the most recent news press and we get the most recent description. Two Hands Corporation is a Canadian-based distribution company primarily operating through the Core Food Service brand. Though they do have another brand they're working through, Smart for Life. We offer a wide array of products ranging from produce, meats, and pantry items. This comes from core food service, bakery and pastry goods, gluten-free and organic items. These come from Smart for Life, all sourced from diverse suppliers in Canada and internationally. And we're going to get more information about what the company's doing when we look at their news. Taking a look at the relative volume for the company. Well, that's a nice jump. Yeah, they're real small numbers. Absolutely. We went from under 7,000 shares a day to just over 14,000 shares. It is very small numbers, but it is over 100% increase. Look at the percentages, not always the numbers. Share structure. All right, we need to talk about this. The company did a reverse split in September. It's funny, too, because when you look at the news, they talk about a proposed reverse split on September 27th. On September 29th is when they did it. If you scroll down the page like I just did, come down here to dividends and splits and hit that split. Boom. September 29th, a one and one thousand reverse split. Folks, we're at 42 million right now. You add three zeros to this, which is what you got to do, you're at 42 billion shares. That's how big it was. So they have brought this down huge, and they just did this here recently. Now, I want you to take notice here, though. Look at this. Back in 2022, they did a 1 in 1,000 reverse split. 2019, another one. 2018, a 1 in 500, and 2016, a 1 in 2,000. 
Folks, that is a ton of reverse splits. But what's most concerning is there's no way they went from reverse split to reverse split without reloading all them shares up, which means they were probably doing a ton of public offerings, pulling the shares back and then selling them again, pulling the shares back and selling them again. So I'm not crazy about that. That is not a sign of a company I want to get into for any long term. But as we're looking right now, we've got 42 million shares in this company. Looks like the insiders own the majority of them, about 37, 38 million. What's that leave us? We've now got ourselves a super small float under 5 million. Now you say, so what, what's that matter? Well, think of it this way. What if tomorrow they did uh, 10 million shares? I know that's a big jump, but it's not outrageous, 10 million shares. Well, that means they would have to sell every share that's on the market twice. Well, people who buy them, what if they don't want to sell them? That's when the price starts going up, supply and demand. That's why the price can move very quickly with small floats. Financials for two hands. All right, back in 2020, they had $159,000. We know it's thousands because we got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2021, they really kicked it up to 930,000 and then fell back to 731,000. And they're taking a little bit of profit, not very much. Looking at our quarterly reports, well, now things are getting better, right? What did we have in our annual? We had 731. So let's see here, one, two, three, four, one, four, five, six, seven. We're running about even keel right now, just quick math in my head. But we are on a high. Right, we're at $197,000. And I did take a look at their most recent quarterly report, which has come out, but it isn't posted here yet. They're at 212,000. So they are growing consistently, not huge leaps and bounds, but they are growing. Although the uh, profits are still real light. Looking at the balance sheet for the company, <laughs> talking about light, <clears throat> they don't have much money in the bank, do they? Cash and cash equivalents, 8,000. Thank God for them three zeros. Total assets is only 203,000. Total liabilities is huge. Oh my goodness, we're almost 10 times. Over 10, 11, 2.2 million, which means we're holding a bag. We are, but we're playing this for the profits. We're not playing it for an investment at this point. So right now, stockholder equity, oh, there's other numbers to be added in, wow. There is a deficit of 4.5 million on this company. Taking a look at the disclosures. Only thing we've really got here that's semi-recent is the most recent 10Q, the quarterly financial, which is very interesting. This is a pink. Most pinks you get disclosures. Disclosures aren't audited. They're just numbers the management's passing off to you. These companies can request to go under stricter accounting. And this company has done that. They have volunteered to be more transparent. That's a 10Q. 10Qs have to be audited. So you're going to get solid information in there. You're not just taking management's word on this. So we do have a transfer agent verified and we've got verified numbers. All right, let's go take a look at that news now. So I've only got three pieces of news here. I could probably find more if I did a search, but I think going back to September as far as we need to go back. There is that proposed reverse split on the 27th. Two days later, they did it. Proposed my butt. Then in November, on the 6th and the 27th, we have two pieces of news, and I want to dive into both of these. The first one came out on November 6th. Two Hands Corporation launches Sports Illustrated Line Protein Bars in Canada. It is who you think it is. Two Hands Corporation is thrilled to announce the introduction of the protein bar product lines from Sports Illustrated Nutrition, a smart for life company to the Canadian marketplace. The new line of protein bars is a clean and energizing non-GMO cold pressed with no sucralose and no preservatives and includes gluten-free options and now comes in a variety of tempting flavors. This collaboration unites the iconic stature of the Sports Illustrated brand with Two Hands Corporation, positioning us for substantial growth in this market segment. That's big news. She should be moving faster as far as I'm concerned. That other piece of news came out on the 27th. 
Two Hands Corporation elevating Can Canada's, Canada's micro merchant wholesaler landscape. Two Hands Corporation proudly announces a significant initiative to revolutionize the micro food merchant wholesaler sector. Now, this is very interesting. This strategy involves reaching out to micro food merchant wholesalers who are in trouble and helping equip them with comprehensive infrastructure, including warehousing, distribution, logistic, digital solutions, and even inventory financing. This initiative targets over 2,600 micro merchant wholesalers across Canada, particularly those with annual sales between 1.5 and 5 million. Two Hands Corporation is dedicated to ensuring the growth and stability of these critical businesses in the Canadian economy. Now, I'm sure they're going to treat them just like any holdings company would. We're going to help your company for a percentage. We get a portion of it. And if you get a lot of pieces of pie out of that 2,600 micro market sector, you're going to have a lot of streams of income coming in. So this is what they're doing. They've got products that are fresh and they got products that are packaged. They've got big names they are working with. I see things starting to turn and the chart is where I see the turn happening. And I'm telling you folks, it's not a big stretch to grab 100 to 400% gains on this. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It doesn't look like much, especially with all my lines drawn down there. But believe me, she's got potential. This is TWOH, Two Hands Corporation, and we're going to chart this in my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. So we're looking at a six-month, four-hour view. We've got a high back here six months ago of $1.50, and then we hit the ultimate low, the lowest you can go on the open market, triple zero one. We did that halfway through August. Now, zoom it in so that you can start to see what's going on here. All of these supports and resistances come from a long way back. I drew these a long time ago, but they are legitimate. And I want you to take notice here what's going on. She came down, she was falling for a long time, and she's basically hitting bottom right here, scraping across the bottom. And you can see it is this resistance right here that is getting most of the attention. She was on top of it, got underneath it, fell, came back up to it, really couldn't get over it until the 200 got close. Once it got close, she broke out over that strong resistance and just pushed herself over that 200. And this was a solid run, folks. That went from 11 cents just to here is 60 cents. You're looking at over 500% run there. But it was an early breakout. This came too soon. Our 200 has got too much of an incline right now. So I would have expected this to come down actually faster. But she came down later through the 200 and look where she's hit that very strong support and she is sitting on it right now now there is a lot of down pressure from the smas but she is tagging that 200 right now she is reaching up and banging onto it now look here if we start drawing some resistances here we've got one right there let's draw another one right there i can see and there's one up there okay we're down here at 14 cents Getting to this one right here, you can see everything was sitting on top of that. That is just over 26 cents. From 14 cents to 26 is almost 100% gains. Then to get up here, we're going to 50 cents, the next one. Well, that there is going to be 75% gains from where we're at. From here, that's 100% gains. And then it pushes up over to 60. Folks, this looks very easy. When you look, let me back this up. Actually, let's go forward. You'll get a better view of this on the forward picture. One hour, 20 day. So that is 20 days. We are up here at 53 cents 18 days ago. She fell down to 11 cents. And right now we are just at about 14 cents sitting on this strong support. To get back up to 60 cents is not that big of a stretch. Look at these bounces. Look at that huge bounce. Look at that huge drop. Look at that one. This moves and it moves quickly. And why? Because it's got a small float. So I'm expecting this to start turning around. She has hit this once, floated over it, floated, hit it again. Now all of our oscillators, they aren't real excited. 
All of our escalators are a bit cool, but she's on a downtrend right now. We are scraping the floor and I'm expecting it to come back up in the next couple of days. And once she starts to come up, I expect her to fly. And that's when we're gonna, we're gonna be able to grab one, two, three, 400% gains. Maybe in one day, maybe in four days, but it deserves to be on your watch list. Five day, five minute. She's just going sideways right now. Her low here is 11 and a half cents, 25 cents is her high. Look at that folks, that, that right there is 120% gains going from that low to that high bubble and she's in that range right now. She just keeps going from top to bottom. This looks like easy money to me. But of course, do your own DD. In the meantime though, in case you forget, put TWOH on your watch list. You might be happy you did. We got another hot pink here. This is Exalus Holdings, ticker XALL. Now the company's got a ton of catalysts. She's had news about all of these acquisitions that she's making. She is expanding into other sectors and her chart is setting up as an atypical breakout chart right now. Over the last 30 days, she's had a lot of volume. And during that period, she hit a 52 week low. Well, she's been bouncing off of that low and today she had a nice jump. She came out from underneath all of the SMAs on top of the 200 before falling back on top of the 20. It looks like a perfect setup for a run and we've got a lot of catalysts. So Exalus finished the day today at 0016 with almost 14 and percent gains. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got those green ticks, the validated information, and she too has listed her independent director, so she must be thinking of uplisting as well. So what is it that Exalus does? Well, I'm going to bypass this description for the most recent one that came out in your most recent news press. Exalus Holdings is a leading holdings company specializing in innovative technology and financial services. I believe they call that fintech. Focused on growth and diversification, Exalus Holdings is committed to developing cutting-edge technology-based solutions across various sectors, with an emphasis on supporting disruptive companies. Utilizing its proprietary Exalus Rise business model, the company is actively seeking acquisition targets that are solid. Emphasizing the integration of blockchain and cutting-edge technologies, the company provides industry leading solutions and they are posed to capture reoccurring revenue streams over time. And as I said, we're always going to get more information looking at the news. So what was her relative volume today? Well, we had a nice increase there about a million shares jumping from 4.8 million to almost 6 million share structure for Exalis. Oh, we got a lot of shares here. Outstanding share count is at 1.5 billion. Insiders got most of them. They got about 830 million. That still leaves off 685 million if these numbers are correct. Market cap is real low down here at 2.1 million. Let's check out those financials. All right, there's a few things to take notice of here. First off, she's exploded from 2021 to 2022 under a half a million to just under 6 million. Wow, that is a huge jump in revenues. The other thing here, they don't pay anything for their revenues. They get to keep every single penny they make. That's what you get when you have digital products. Let's take a look at our quarterly reports. Oh my God. All right, folks, look here. Annual, at the end of 2022, she did 5.9 million. Looking at her quarterlies here, three, six, seven, seven, seven. We got roughly $17 million over the last year. So you can see her revenues are exploding right now and they are keeping all of it. They don't have to pay a cent for the money they make. Taking a look at that balance sheet, cash and cash equivalents. They got about a quarter million dollars in the bank. Total assets, 4.3 million. Total liabilities, 2.4 million. That means there is positive shareholder equity of 1.9 million. Woohoo! <laughs> we like that. Disclosures for the company. Haven't had anything since January of last year. So let's just bounce on over to that news. Now, actually, 
I do want to look at each one of these pieces of news. They've got a lot of news here. They've been making a lot of acquisitions. I can just keep going back, but I want to give you an idea of what they're doing here. So jumping into the very first one, these are all from November and December, all of these. Exalus Holdings expands portfolio with University Consultants of America acquisition. This came out November 16th. The company announced its acquisition of University Consultants of America, a leader in education consulting sector. This acquisition marks the formation of a new education business group. The next one came out December 1st. Exalus Holding expands with key acquisition of uncrewed, unmanned systems innovator Artemis Defense Technologies. Artemis Defense Technologies will be first entity in New Exalus' security business group. The company announces its strategic acquisition of Artemis Defense Technologies, this is a UK business, a leading company in uncrewed, unmanned systems technology known for its advanced AI and automated de designs. This acquisition heralds the creation of a new security business group for the company. Next one came out December 11th. Exalus Holdings to acquire RPM1, advancing its position in digital healthcare innovation. The company announced its planned acquisition of RPM1, a renowned data, analytics, and technology firm. This move signifies a strategic expansion into the di digital healthcare market. Are we keeping tabs here? I've lost track. The very last one came out December 12th. Exalus Holdings announces strategic acquisition of Fluid Tech. The company announced its intention to acquire Fluid Tech, a leader in the payments and financial services sector. This strategic acquisition is posed to significantly enhance the company's existing financial service offerings. Fluid Tech is at the forefront of AI-backed payment solutions, offering seamless integration with banking software and payment platforms. Now, of course, there's a lot more information you can get in there, folks, but you can see they're making acquisition after acquisition after acquisition, and all of these companies are already making money. They haven't given us all of that information, but we're going to see their revenues getting bigger and bigger. If you thought they were getting big fast now, wait to the next quarterly report. I think that's going to be very impressive. But right now, we're concerned about the bounce or the breakout over that 200. So let's go take a look at that chart. Well, that chart's a little easier to read at first glance. This is Exalus Holdings, ticker XALL. That is a six month, four hour view. It was a full six months ago when we hit our high of 0075 when she was well above the 200. When she came down and broke it, she fought with that for about two months until she lost that battle, falling down here ultimately to a 52 week low of 0011 at the beginning of December. Now, way before the 200 even got close, she was anxious to get to it. This was back in uh, September, October. She started her move. She was down here at 0014 and ran all the way up to 0033. You're looking at over 100% run. She broke through the 200, but it's way too steep to stay up there. But it shows us her intention. She wants to break out. She came back down, stayed right in that zone, did it again. Came back down, and this time she slipped falling down to that 52-week low. She's bounced off of that low, put herself on top of the nine, and then just went sideways until today. Today, we were underneath the nine. She went through every single SMA, including the 200, all the way up here. That jump went from 0014 up to 0024. And then it's fallen back down here to 0016. Well, that is on top of the 20, on top of the nine. No, she's not over the 200, but that was a beautiful play and it adjusted the price on top of things now. And look at our oscillators. Our PPO looks like it is going for the pink line and about ready to cross it. That'll give us some more power. Our MACD is already at its crossover back here off of the low bubble and it is now approaching the signal line. Cross that signal line, we'll get some strength. And our RSI is cool right now at about 49. Taking a look at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, as you can see, she broke through a strong resistance. These lines I've had up for a while and they are still legitimate lines. So we had a high about 20 days ago of 0031, fell down to that 52 week low, crossed all the SMAs, 
Once we got to the 50, she broke out. Bam! Huge, big bounces. And then she's come back down and she is now on top of the 50. She was not on top of the 50 before this bounce. She's adjusted herself. She's getting on to the next step, moving up. Osculators. Well, our PPO has gotten weak, our MACD has gotten weak, our RSI has gotten weak. That was a huge climb. That was a huge fall. But she's higher than where she started and in a stronger position right now. Coming down to our five-day, five-minute. Not a lot of activity for the last four days. She was down there at that low, got up on top of the 50, is struggling to stay near that 50. And then today she just took off, as I said, from about 0014 to 0024, falling back. She's pulled the 50-day up, and look, she is not wanting to really go underneath this. She tagged it a little bit and she's coming back up. This looks like it is setting up for another nice bounce. Our osculators, they show maybe an intention of recovery. They are on the down point, just kind of starting to get to the floor and turn around. But now would be a good time to watch it. If she's going to turn around, she's on the floor right now. XALL has got a ton of catalysts, folks. Do some more due diligence. You'll see. She's got a lot of companies. You saw how fast those revenues are growing. They went from a half a million to six million to 17 million thus far to date. So this company has got value and they have positive stockholder equity. I'm liking XALL. But then, just so you know, I do own it. <laughs> That's why my lines are on there. I've been in this for quite a while. And I'm not pumping it to get it to rise for me. I think she's got to run. You can see that, can't you? Yes! I was able to sneak in a NASDAQ stock into this pink neighborhood. <laughs> this is ticker XELB Excel Brands. Now, we are primarily looking at this because of the chart. It is a primed, atypical breakout chart that is moving right now. Over the last six months, half of it, she was in a serious uptrend. Then she took this serious dip coming down through the 200. She bowled around and right now she's breaking through again. And they did have some big news with a big name not too long ago. So I think it's worth looking at. So Excel finished the day at $1.34 with just over 7% gains. And as I said, she is on the NASDAQ. God, I love these penny stocks on the major exchanges. They come with benefits, unlike the OTC. For example, you can trade penny stocks on the major exchange for free. You can't do that on OTC. You can trade major exchange penny stocks pre-market and aftermarket. Can't do that with OTC. And you know what else? There's a lot more volume and a lot more money up on the major exchanges. So yeah, I do kind of lean towards major exchange penny stocks. So what does this company do? Well, as we've been doing, we're going to skip this description and jump into the most recent news press. They tell us here that Excel Brands is a media and consumer products company engaged in the design, production, and marketing of branded apparel, footwear, accessories, fine jewelry, home goods, and other consumer products. And they sell this through streaming media, social commerce, TV, things such as that. The company was founded in 2011 with a vision to reimagine shopping, entertainment, and social media as one thing. Excel owns lots of different brands. Judith Ripka, Halston, Logo by Lori Goldstein, See Wonder by Christian Scenario, and a minority stake in Isaac Maserahi. I don't know all of those. It also owns and manages the Longa Berger brand through its controlling interest in the larger Berger licensing. Excel is pioneering a true modern consumer product sales strategy, which includes the promotion and sale of products under its brands through interactive television, digital live stream shopping, social commerce, brick and mortar retail, and e-commerce channels to be everywhere its customers shop. The company's brands have generated in excess of $4 billion in retail sales via live streaming in interactive television and ditto channels alone. And they are headquartered here in New York. I was expecting it to be China. What was the relative volume around the company today? 
Well, we've got a nice jump. It is over 100%. It's closer to 200% actually. We went from about 21,000 shares up to 59,000 shares. Not a huge share amount, I'll agree with you, but that is a 200% increase in volume. Share structure, well, that's not bad. Outstanding share count is roughly 19.7 million. We don't know what the float is, but it's not gonna be any higher than that. Our market cap isn't too bad. That's up there at 24 and a half million. Taking a look at those financials. Well, before COVID, they were doing real well. Through COVID, they fell. Coming out, they were getting stronger, but now we've fallen again. We're down to 25.7 million, and their profits are falling too, but they are still bringing in profits. Quarterlies, well, a year ago, they were doing real well, 8.4 million. The last three quarters, they've been down, and right now, we are starting to come back. We're at 6.7 million, and we got to take home 2.9 million in profit. Now, I did take a peek at the most recent quarterly report that came out. It wasn't impressive. It was 2.3 million. That is a huge drop. That is the lowest that they've had in the last year. So that is a bit concerning. Taking a look at the balance sheet. Well, they got lots of money in the bank. Cash and cash equivalents are 3.5 million. Total assets, we're up there at 81.5 million. Total liabilities is under 20 million. Folks, this company is not in bad shape. Stockholder equity is positive. We are at about $62 million. Now, if you want to know what that number is good for, this can give you a basic outline of what the price should be of the stock. Take the outstanding shares. What did you have? 19.3 million, something like that. And divide that into this number. That would tell you what the price should be. And that is roughly three, right? So it should be up near $3. And we're down at $1.34. I was just doing rough math in my head. Let's take a look at those disclosures. All right, we've got two 8Ks here. One goes with the 10Q. You always get an 8K to go with the financials. The other one is about a shareholders meeting. I looked at it just to make sure they weren't voting on a reverse split. There wasn't. So we really don't have anything here except their most recent financials. If you want to know about the company, forget about going to Google and doing searches. You'll be bouncing around like a rabbit. Just come on over here to the 10Q. They have everything you want to know since the day the company was incorporated. All right, let's take a look at that news now. Now we got a lot of old news. This is all from 2015. And then we've got a bunch of news down here. But there really isn't a lot of big news. And they do have big news. They've made a lot of deals here with a lot of different companies. One of them is Alpha OES. This is going with the Long Berger brand. And then we've got a piece of news here. This is recent and it's big. At least it is to me. This came out on December 4th. Excel Brands and fashion icon Christy Brinkley formed joint venture. Do you know who Christy Brinkley is? Oh my God, she was my heartthrob for a while. She was a supermodel. Super is right. Now, I want to jump into this piece of news and one other piece of news that is not listed here. So they tell us over here that Christy Brinkley, that's her in her older years, not looking bad. Christy Brinkley, the supermodel, actress, and entrepreneur, is launching a lifestyle and apparel brand through a joint venture with Excel Brands. The brand called Tower Hill is expected to launch in spring of 2024 and will be sold on live stream channels and at stores. Excel indicated in its announcement Monday, Brinkley will serve as the public face and the voice of the brand and will appear on broadcasts and streaming services. And the other piece of news came out, where was the date here? June 6th. It's a little older, but it's big news. Excel Brands announced Master Licensee Partnership with G3 Apparel Group. They are on the NASDAQ, ticker GIII. They are a global expert in design, sourcing, distribution, and marketing. Under this new agreement, G3 will design and produce all categories and distribute products globally for the Halston business and all of its brands. Now check this out. This agreement resulted in an upfront advance payment in May 2023 and has a term of 25 years. G3 is known for unlocking unlocking the potential of brands such as 
DKNY, Carl Lagerford Paris, Calvin Klein, and Tommy Hilfinger's. Folks, these are huge names. I may not be able to pronounce them right, but I recognize them. So this company is now working with this company, G1 or G3 is working with Excel Brands to sell the Halston line of products globally, and they've got great experience in it. And now they got Christy Brinkley with them. Folks, this to me is big stuff. The apparel industry isn't something I really follow, as you can tell, but a lot of people do. And I think this is going to be good business for them. I know it's older news, but the chart is set up right now. And even a stale catalyst can get a hot chart moving. And Christy, well, she's hot. <laughs> Enough of that. Let's go look at the chart. And that is a hot chart. This is Excel Brands, ticker XELB. That's a six month, four hour view. We've got our low bubble back in this corner of 51 cents. That was back in May when she started her run. She was here at 51 cents and her initial pop was up here to $1.87. That is over 300% before she took this drop and then took another run, pushing a new high of $2.10. And from there, she crashed the 200 and fell all the way down here. And as I said, she is bowling around right now and she is just chugging on through that 200. And here comes our 200 day haul, the 50 day and the 20 day, all pushing towards that 200. When they cross that 200, those are called golden crosses. One of the strongest technicals you can find on the charts. Look at our oscillators. Our PPO is pushing up like a big tsunami wave, just like our MACD. And our RSI is tagging on to the overbought right now. As you can see, she has had some good bounces off of her financials. Each one of these, it just kept climbing afterwards. I don't know when her next financial is, though. Taking a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Oh, God, that's a dreamy chart. 20 days of climbing. We were back here at 84 cents underneath every single SMA. In this corner, we're at $1.41. We're at like 80% gains there. Slowly, methodically, she is just climbing. Just worked her way over that 200 using the 50-day SMA as her support. Once she got away from the 200, she also pushed away from the 50. Now it became the 20-day. She's getting lighter and lighter. She's moving up higher and higher. And now she's pushed away from the 20 and she is trying to maintain on the nine day SMA. She hit her high of 141 just before the day end and then fell back to $1.34, but is still on top of her nine day SMA. All of these SMAs are nicely spaced in the right order. You want the biggest one on the bottom and the lightest one on the top. Those are looking great. The volume. It's getting bigger and bigger. It did pull back a little bit today, but you know, you have short days and high days, but it is growing. And look at our 200. She was falling. She got flat right here where she tagged it and pushed away. And now our 200 is climbing as well. Our oscillators, PPO and MACD are a little different actually. Our PPO is climbing, a little bit of dip down, but she's climbing. Our MACD is climbing, though she's wrestling right now, going sideways. And our RSI is taking a dip, but I don't see anything I'd be concerned about. Five day, five minute. Another dreamy chart. What did I expect? We had a low here of 98 cents. Riding on that 50-day SMA, right? She pushed away from both the 50 and the 20 and was floating on that nine-day escalator, going to heaven. Then she crashed here. She came down underneath the 50-day SMA, and today she broke through that, broke through the 200 haul, and everything is starting to push up now. This is looking like a nice setup. Now, she has pulled back, but she has landed on her 200 haul. Now, we talk about this in a lot of my videos. The 200 haul is a lot like your 200-day SMA. It takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then puts more credence on current prices. And penny stocks have been paying a lot of heed to this. Well, what we see here is the 200 is fresh and new on the screen, just like the 200-day uh, haul. And she normally would run to the new SMA. Well, this is the newest. That's the newest SMA. So she got away from it, and then decided to tag it. I think it's going to bounce, folks. That's just a gut feeling. Our oscillators, well, because of that big bar, everything is pushing down right now. Even our RSI took a big drop. But again, 
I'm not concerned with it. All of our SMAs are pushing up. The price is pushing up for the last 20 days she's been climbing. It looks good to me, folks. And Christy Brinkley, she's a big name, folks. I know half of you probably don't know her, but she, like anybody else, when she gets her products out there, she's going to help this company make money. But we're not looking at it down the road. We are looking at this for a quick gain, you know, in the next week or so. So there is more information you could go dig up on this company. Don't just go to the OTC market. You'll want to use Google for news. And there is more information on the other stocks as well. So don't cheat yourself. Do your own due diligence. I didn't cover it all. I may have missed something important. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.